I'm Derek Johnson. Welcome into another edition of Locked on Jayhawks. And on today's show, KU gets the region of death, so to speak. Let's discuss their NCAA tournament path as March Madness is officially upon us. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Derek Johnson. You can hear me as well on Rock Chalk Sports Talk Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get any of your podcasts, and you can also find us on YouTube. On today's edition of Locked on Jayhawks, we're discussing KU listed as a one seed, but uh, certainly not the one seed that people would have thought getting in the bracket of death, the region in front of them, and the little two-game pod in front of them. We always hear, always hear coaches talk about all the time, just three two-game tournaments. You got to focus on three two-game tournaments. It's a two-game tournament at a time, so we'll look at that two-game tournament um, on this episode of the show. I guess first things first, overall thoughts uh, on kind of the season and, and that got them to the point here. Obviously, if you would have you know said before the season started that with as much as KU lost with Ochag Baji and Christian Brown and David McCormick, Remy Martin, Mitch Lightfoot, all these guys, that if this Kansas team was going to get the third overall one seed, you'd be like, okay, sure, let's do it, right? Um, unbelievably impressive season by Bill Self and, and by these players to, as much as they lost last year, to now earn their way into being one of the one seeds that even though they got the third one seed, I'm sure they were still in contention for for maybe the number one or number two one seed as well. So impressive job by KU to even get to that point. And uh, it's the 10th one seed in Bill Self's time at Kansas. And that's in 20 seasons. Every other season, Kansas is getting a one seed. Like, it's almost like you've become numb to the idea that, oh, Kansas is going to get a one or a two seed, right? And and think about if you want to view it that way too, how many other years Kansas has been a two seed where it's like, oh, darn, they didn't get a one seed this year, but they're a two seed, right? And uh, like, think about for Alabama, for instance, I think this is their first time ever getting a one seed in program history. I know Alabama is a football school and you don't, you know, they, they haven't always been like great at basketball, but like, that is incredible that you're doing it once every other year. And for some of these schools, it's like, oh, yep, first time ever. Like, yes, we did it. So uh, I guess uh, if you're looking for some positives, because KU obviously did get in a very difficult bracket, well, every time KU has made a Final Four under Bill Self, they've been in the bottom half of the bracket. In 2008, they were the fourth one seed, bottom left region. In 2012, they were the uh, two seed in the bottom right region. In 2018, they were the the third one seed, so the uh, bottom right region. And then last season, they were the third one seed in the bottom right region. Actually, the third one seed is, has done pretty well for KU in recent memories. It's the years that they've been like the number one overall one seed or the number two one seed that like the 2011 team that loses to VCU or the 20, 2010 team that loses to Northern Iowa. Now, does that actually like have any bearing on what they're going to do? Probably not, but hey, you know, any any extra good juju, any extra good luck, any extra good little stats or nuggets that come your way this time of year uh, are never really a bad thing. But obviously the biggest shock or the biggest, I don't know, uh, thing that people were mad about is that KU is not ahead of Houston. And I think that if Houston would have won the American Athletic Conference Championship, there there still would have been some people that would have been upset about it and or surprised about it, but it probably would have been a lot less. The fact that Houston got blown out by Memphis in the AAC title, the same way that Kansas did to Texas, except Texas is like a an elite two seed that could win the title. Whereas Memphis is like a solid eight seed, I guess um, that certainly said that Houston seemed to matter and Kansas's did not. We heard some very head scratching comments from the committee chair about why they were ahead of Houston and that they lumped together quad one and quad two wins as if those are the same thing to which Kansas still had more of them um, to begin with. 
and they they cited the idea that the Kansas had lost a bunch of games by a, a good amount of points to which I would say, well, Houston didn't play teams that could beat them by a good amount of points, whereas Kansas did. So why was that the case? And then they also cited Bill Self, that is uh, possible uncertainty for the tournament. But KU literally said on Saturday night that they expect Bill Self back next week. And I guess if you're the committee, who are you to say they're lying you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That just feels like you're crossing kind of a weird line if that's the place that you're going to. Honestly, I would have been a lot more comfortable because if you look at a lot of like the metric sites or if you just look at like betting odds and stuff like Houston is kind of the team to beat to win the title in a lot of those different areas. If they would have just come out and said, yeah, we just we just think Houston's a much better team. You know, Kansas lost seven times. They lost by double digits all these times or whatever. I could have probably got on board with that a little bit more. Now, to be clear, I have always been, and I will continue to be, that the bracket should be seeded by resume, to which KU's resume was astounding this year, and it was better than Houston. So I, I still would have had Kansas out of Houston, but I think I would have been able to stomach that reasoning a little bit more than the reasoning that they did give, which is uh, certainly a little bit unfortunate there. And very surprising. And now Kansas doesn't get Kansas City. And honestly, you know what? If if Kansas City would have been the region of death, like if Kansas City, where the Midwest was the region that KU got in the West, everybody, I, I think I would have at least been like, oh, that's actually good. They're not in the Midwest. I think the bigger deal isn't necessarily that they don't get Kansas City. I think the bigger deal is that the West is absolutely loaded. It is one of the most loaded regions I can remember in recent memory. I mean, I I was talking with uh, Scott Chasen, who works for the Kansas City Star, and he brought up uh, the the 2014 region. I forget which area it was, but that featured like you had one seed undefeated Wichita State. You had the eight seed, which was Kentucky that year, which ended up going to the title game. The four seed that year was Louisville, who was the number one team in Ken Palm, but they were the four seed. You had a two seed Michigan, who was like the Big Ten champs. It was an unbelievably loaded region from start to finish. That's like this region this year, and it's uh, very unfortunate that KU slid to the West for that very reason, and a lot of those schools are from the West Coast, so you're basically playing road games if you can make it to that point. There's no cakewalks even through like the second round in this region for KU, so uh, very, very difficult, but I, I think the hope here would be that you would you would hope this pisses off the KU coaches and players, and it gives them a little extra chip on their shoulder, right? Sometimes being uncomfortable can be a bit of a good thing sometimes being able to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder can be a good thing and there could be something unifying about the idea that the team is like are you kidding me we didn't get put behind them and we're the defending national champs and now we got to go on the road but you know we're gonna have this team camaraderie bonding opportunity you can spin it that there could be a good thing out of it. I know a lot of people will remember the the Oregon Elite Eight or just the KU Texas game that was in the T-Mobile Center from just last weekend and be like, okay, well, at least we're not there again. Certainly the path is, is very difficult, but um, that would be kind of the hope here, that KU turns it into a positive. But, yeah, absolutely the bracket of death because, you know, every year, there's always like a team or two in KU's region where people are like, oh, no, they're screwed. They're going to lose. That goes a little too far because what ends up happening, like especially I remember the 2018 season where it's like, are you kidding me? They got Duke as the two and Michigan State as three. And it's like, well, you're only going to have to play one of them. But the problem for me becomes what does it look like on your half of the bracket? And also beyond that. Are there other opportunities, right? Because the NCAA tournament is so weird. One team can that, that you thought was going to be a big issue for your team gets upset. The problem with this bracket for KU that's different than other ones in the past is that if one team loses, it, it's like a, whatever that mythical creature is where like you cut off the one head and then like two more grow back because it's like, okay, well, you know, UConn's really good and they scare me, but what if they get upset in the first round? Oh, no, now you're playing St. Mary's, who slows it down, and KU doesn't do well against slow tempo, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, what happens if, okay, well, Arkansas could be a matchup nightmare. Oh, well, they lost. Well, that's good. Oh, no, but Illinois beat us in a secret scrimmage, right? Like, there's a lot of just different options that make it 
cover a little bit more so where there's not as good of a chance that you do get an open bracket, which uh, certainly makes this bracket very, very difficult. If you just look by Ken Palm rankings, KU is the fourth highest rated team. I think by Bart Torvik, they're the fifth highest rated team in their own region. All right, we're going to get on to uh, some more look at KU's region, their their first weekend pod and, and some other stuff here. But first, this episode of Locked on Jayhawks is brought to you by Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. Uh, you want to eat healthier, especially this time of year. You're going to be digging in on chicken wings and all sorts of probably not great for you foods during the NCAA tournament. So you got to make up for it in other areas. Well, Built Bar is perfect because... It's going to be eating healthy, but it's also going to taste good. 100% real chocolate, and they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. They're only 130 calories. They have 4 grams of sugar, so that's not very much at all. And they have a whopping 17 grams of protein, so you're going to get your protein intake. And you can order them online at Built.com, you know, while you're sitting around watching basketball. Gives you something to do on the phone. Or if you want to stock up before the tournament starts up, head over to your local Walmart or Sam's Club today. You can head to the pharmacy section at Walmart, get yourself a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate. How about some coconut puffs? If you're close to a Sam's Club, run in, grab a 13-bar box, and then you'll really be storing up. Maybe you can share with some of your friends if you're watching the tournament together. Hit flavors like brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later with Bill Bar. KU's for wind features Howard, the 16 seed. I feel like this is the first 16 we've had in a while that uh, isn't like the playing game. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm probably forgetting somebody, but it is kind of refreshing just to be like, okay, this is who you play, you know? Um, so they're going to be up in Des Moines. They didn't get Kansas City. They did get Des Moines, which is a good thing because they'll have a lot of fans in attendance. Certainly, I'd imagine Illinois will have a good amount of fans in attendance. They they travel well, and also they're not too far out. Arkansas travels pretty well, too. Uh, they're really into basketball. They're like, I don't know, they might be the most like into basketball of the SEC schools, so they'll probably travel well also. Um, but the Howard game is a game that you expect to win big. The Howard game is a game you expect to blow them out. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that. Uh, we'll get more into like our, our preview, I guess, later in the week. But um, Thursday, Saturday is the two games for KU. They're going to be playing the kind of Thursday um, early game, I guess would be the way of putting it. I think it's the uh, one o'clock game for KU on Thursday. And when you look at who they could be matching up between the winner of Arkansas and Illinois, it's very interesting for both because, well, one, I guess you can get revenge for the Liberty Bowl if you do play against Arkansas. Um, but if you play Illinois, you can get revenge for the secret scrimmage. So perfect revenge opportunity for KU. It, it, it's a tough 8-9 matchup, to, to put it at the very least. Now, which one does KU match up better against? I don't know. I would, I would probably lean toward Illinois just because um, – they're the worst team like Arkansas is ranked 20th on Ken Palm. Illinois is 33rd. So from that standpoint, you probably go for Illinois there. Arkansas has they have a lot of talent. Uh, Anthony Black is a going to be a first round pick in the NBA. He's a freshman. Nick Smith's going to be a, a lottery pick in the NBA. He's a freshman. Uh, Jordan Walsh is a young freshman. They, they have a lot of guys in their lineup who have very high potential, but they're inconsistent. And that's they ended up as an eight seed. But the reason you don't want to play, what if you get the the inconsistent side of it where it's them at their high peak, where they're causing you issues? Black being 6'7 at the point guard is a little scary, too, because your point guard play, like whoever you have at the point guard is a little bit smaller. Um, but I guess they are a little bit smaller on the wings and everything. So I don't know. I, I don't love the Arkansas matchup. They're a team that will really, really defend you, get up India. Um, they don't really shoot the ball well, but they're good in transition. They're athletic. They run fast. They run hard. If it's Illinois, um, I guess it'd be a, another matchup against uh, Matthew Meyer, who we were used to seeing with with Baylor. Uh, but they have they have some good wings. So Terrence Shannon kind of plays all up and down the lineup for them. Uh, Matthew Meyer, as I mentioned, like RJ Melendez. They've got a, a good center in Coleman Hawkins. They're both good teams that are capable of beating you. You're going to be favored in either one, though, and you're going to be expected to win. But, you know, if you play a, a C game, like it probably won't be enough to to get through in that round. Um, I 
I, I, I'd be curious where KU fans stand on playing like power five competition in terms of those second round games. Cause off the top of my head, those have actually gone better for KU. Like you think back to losses to Northern Iowa and UTEP in the second round. Whereas like you think back to some of the times you've played some of these power five or power six, whatever they are schools that have a big pedigree. Like when you played UConn in 2016 or when you played Michigan state in 2017, um, and or you know you play some of these power five competition you've done better so I, I i don't know what to totally expect i think for ku you just hope to make it out of the first weekend and then hope that maybe some of the bracket broke in front of you but it should be a uh, pretty tough first weekend with the winner of arkansas and illinois all right we're going to finish things up here talking more about the overall region not just this kind of uh first little pod the two game tournament for ku with on Jayhawks. But first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores, three pointers drained. You can get in all the action for the NCAA tournament. They've even got a couple boosts going right now here in Kansas on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You can get a basically $10 uh, free bet. Go check out all the terms and conditions on that. You can also do a uh, same or a uh, parlay with four plus legs on it, like put $25 on it. And if three of the four legs hit, you like get yeah, money back in, in bonus bets. Again, read the terms and conditions on it. Um, but if you win, then you're going to be really happy. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same-game parlays. Don't miss your chance for a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, overall region for KU. By the way, Right. Tomorrow's episode, we're going to talk with uh, Nick Schwert to break down a little bit more with KU headed into the NCAA tournament. And then we'll get into a uh, preview later in the week for um, maybe the pod ahead or I don't know. The, uh, should I do a first round preview? I, I don't know. It's against Harvard. I, I guess we've been doing it all season long, so we'll do it again and maybe we'll approach it a little bit differently. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you, you look outside of KU's little first weekend pod with, with Arkansas and Illinois. The four five in this region are very, very dangerous. There, I mean, there's a chance VCU could upset St. Mary's, and who knows? VCU could even make a run to the Sweet 16. It's a hot team. It's a good team. Wouldn't be crazy at all. Um, also, wouldn't be crazy if Iona upset Connecticut. Like, you have Rick Pitino, uh, just some of those former Big East clashes, and, and what if he upset UConn? I will, like, Dan Hurley, as as great of this UConn team is, they're, they're just a four seed, but they're like a top five team in Ken Palm. They've lost a lot of close games, and Dan Hurley has never made a Sweet 16. So it is possible it opens up, but realistically, you're probably going to be playing at least one of St. Mary's or UConn if you make it to the Sweet 16. And both teams are, are very, very tough. UConn is really good on both ends of the floor. They've got the dominant big man, not just with Sonogo, but Klingen, their backup center, is a really good center also. They've got athletic kind of wing guard types. They would just be a very tough matchup for KU. And then for St. Mary's, it's the tempo that would worry me. KU's had some struggles this year against teams who play at very slow tempos. Think back to like Wisconsin, for instance. St. Mary's is just that. They execute very well. They cut very well, which has given KU some problems in, in certain games. with their switching schemes. Um, and the, they'll slow it down. They actually guard you very, very well. So that could be a very tough matchup if you get there. I will say, I, I know St. Mary's is on the West Coast, and, and you'd be like, oh, no, they're playing in the West region on the West Coast. St. Mary's is a very small school. If KU plays St. Mary's, KU will probably have more fans in attendance than St. Mary's. The issue you run into is the bottom end of the bracket, where if you're playing UCLA or Gonzaga, that might be a little tough with, with fan support. KU gets great fan support no matter where they go, and I'm sure, actually, there's a good amount of fans who are chomping at the bit to be like, oh, I'd love to go to Las Vegas and get to watch KU play some NCAA tournament games. So they'd probably have very good fan attendance, but it might be similar like when you play Iowa State in the Big 12 tournament. If you play a Gonzaga or UCLA in the uh, Elite Eight to where it's kind of like a bowl game atmosphere. Um, but, you know, certainly I know a lot of people have bad flashbacks to the 2007 Elite Eight where Kansas lost to UCLA in the Elite Eight. That was in, I want to say, San Jose. 
Uh, it was either San Jose or Oakland. Yeah, I think it was San Jose. Was kind of a road game, and KU missed like 19 layups. But that bottom end of the bracket is really tough too. You can see a lot of teams coming out of there. I think TCU could give Gonzaga trouble if TCU can get by the first four game. Keep in mind, like a first four team wins like every year. So who knows? It could be that one or it could be the other one. But if TCU does get by, I think they could uh, give Gonzaga some fits with their defense. But it almost feels like we're sleeping on Gonzaga because everybody has kind of dispelled them this year. And maybe that makes them more dangerous, even though UCLA is without Jalen Clark. And, and I know one of their big men is hurt right now, but it sounds like he could be back by, you know, the second round or the second weekend, possibly uh, it's kind of questionable, but even without Jalen Clark, like they almost, and they, and they probably should have, they kind of blew the game. They missed some free throws late. Courtney Ramey hits a big shot, uh, a really good Arizona team in the PAC 12 title game, even without him, which showed how good they can be. They're really balanced. They're really good on both ends of the floor. They have the experience. They made the final four from a couple years ago. It's a very, very difficult bracket. 4k you and kind of the uh bracket of death so to speak um and as i kind of said before normally it's not really worth overreacting to multiple good teams on the other side of your region because at most you'd have to play one but the problem is you have to worry about all rounds this time second round matchup difficult sweet 16 matchup difficult elite eight difficult where it does kind of just add up. And that is why it is kind of the region of death or the path of death for, for KU going in. And then you do add in the kicker of all those teams being so close to home. So KU is really going to have to earn this. You know, last year, KU got a pretty open bracket and, you know, maybe had a couple things fall their way, which helped out. You you played a 10 seed in the Elite Eight. You played um, a villanova team with an injured justin moore you played an eight seed in the title game and i'm not taking away like you have the path in front of you and you win it all and, and ku still had to earn it and you know if if you get to those points as those other teams that makes them the good team like other teams couldn't take them out so why should we hold it against you i'm, I'm not trying to take away from anything but my point being here is you're not going to have that same favor this time you're going to really have to earn it with seeding go out and take it have that chip on your shoulder and you know go get an even tougher path Go do what Florida did in 06 and 07 and, and repeat as champions. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. We're going to be joined by Nick Schwartz for tomorrow's episode to break down a little more. Then we'll get to a uh, preview of the, I guess, first round game with KU Howard on the episode after. You can find me on Twitter at D Johnson Radio. You can hit us up on YouTube or wherever you get any of your podcasts. You can also catch me, Rock Truck Sports Talk, 3 to 6, Monday through Friday.